Good morning. I'm Aparna Gupta. I'm assistant professor from Faculty of Physiotherapy from SGT University. Today's topic that I'll be teaching is upper motor neuron lesions and lower motor neuron lesions. Before I begin with the topic, let me explain you the structures which are involved in it. The first and foremost is the brain. This is a longitudinal section that is I have cut it in the frontal plane from top down. Next is midbrain, then pons, then medulla and then we have the brain continues, brain, brain stem and then we have spinal cord. From the spinal cord, the nerves, they come out and then they innervate the skeletal muscles. Now one of the muscles that I am choosing here for explanation today would be biceps brachii. We have thousands of extra fusel fibers within a muscle belly. Those extra fusel, I will be drawing one of the extra fusel fibers. Each extra fusel fiber is in turn connected to intrafusal fiber, which is also known as muscle spindle. Over here is your bone. So, the muscle is attached on either sides on the bone, and we have tendons. which connect the muscle belly to the bone on either side. So this is your tendon, this is the muscle belly, again this is the tendon, this one is the tendon and the bone continues. Now let me draw the sensory apparatus that is the sensory receptors which are present in the muscle spindle. In the tendons we have Golgi tendon organs. The sensory fiber which goes from the muscle spindle into the posterior horn is known as 1A efferent fibers. Then we also have from the Golgi tendon organs, we have the sensory fibers entering the posterior horn of the spinal cord and they have an interneuron and then they synapse on the alpha motor neurons. So this again is the is called 1B fibers. Over here is our dorsal root ganglion. Now let me draw the motor system. The motor system starts from the cortex, the neurons come down, within the medulla there is decussation, it enters the white matter in the spinal cord and synapses on the alpha motor neuron. So this is brain, this is the cortex. This is our corticospinal tract, which is the major motor system tract. Now, this portion is the midbrain, this is pons, this is medulla. The decussation of the corticospinal tract happens at medulla. 
so that means the right brain will influence the left body the skeletal muscles which are present on the left side that is due to the decussation now the most important part is the motor neurons which are coming from the anterior horn cell of the spinal cord and they are having a neuromuscular junction at the extrafusal fiber another motor neuron which is coming out of the anterior horn cell of the spinal cord and it is having a neuromuscular junction at the muscle spindle so this is our alpha motor neurons and these are our gamma motor neurons this is the afferent system this is the efferent system so this is our sensory apparatus this is our motor apparatus and this is from the brain connection with the spinal cord now the major difference between upper motor neurons and the lower motor neurons are the second degree and third degree neurons which are coming from the brain from the brain stem into the spinal cord are known as second degree or third order th second order or third order neurons the neurons which are emanating from the spinal cord and entering the skeletal muscle they are the first order neurons or first degree neurons and these are the lower motor neurons these are the neurons which are coming outside the central nervous system and entering the peripheral muscles okay so over here i have taken this spinal cord section is the c5 c6 since the alpha motor neurons are entering the biceps muscle so this is our biceps muscle and this particular peripheral nerve is musculocutaneous nerve now let us understand the whole physiology that happens whenever there is a stretch in the extrafusal fibers that stretch is picked up by the muscle spindle it is taken by the 1a fibers and enters the spinal cord in the spinal cord the 1a fibers influence synapse with the alpha motor neurons and at the neuromuscular junction there is release of acetylcholine which creates an generation of action potential at the extrafusal fiber and the muscle contracts again the gamma motor neurons which are under the influence from the supraspinal segments they also release acetylcholine and create a contraction in the muscle spindle which is again taken up by the 1a fibers golgi tendon organs are different because these are the they take up tension in the muscle muscle spindles take up the stretch in the muscle so if you stretch the muscle muscle spindles will give signals to the spinal cord if the muscle is having lot of tension that is muscle is uh, holding weight then the capacity the maximum after holding maximum capacity weight in the muscle the mus the golgi tendon organs via 1b fiber influence the spinal cord and there is an interneuron here these interneurons are inhibitory in nature the major property of these interneurons are they are inhibitory in nature so the 1b fibers which influence an interneuron they actually inhibit the alpha motor neurons there is no contraction there is actually relaxation in the muscle and the muscle does not have to hold that exceeding capacity of the weight anymore and thereby it prevents the tendons from avulsing from the bone so this is a preventive mechanism of entire structures that is if the muscle is holding lot of weight then golgi tendon organs they become active then through the 1b fibers they influence the interneurons interneurons are inhibitory in nature they inhibit the alpha motor neurons and they relax the muscle but if we stretch the muscle then muscle spindles through 1a fibers and through alpha motor neurons they create contraction in the muscle now what happens when there is an lesion so either the lesion can be in the peripheral nerve that is the nerve which is coming out from the spinal cord to the skeletal muscle or there can be a lesion somewhere in the second order or third order neurons that is we know, call them as upper motor neuron lesion 
so in both the cases the clinical features the clinical representation will be entirely different now let's see one by one first let's talk about lower motor neuron lesion let's say the peripheral nerve is cut somewhere here in that case even if we stretch the muscle the muscle spindle the sensory apparatus is normal the 1a fibers they carry the signals and they do influence but here due to the cut there is valerian degeneration the alpha motor neurons further do not carry the signals to the extrafusal fibers there is no release of acetylcholine over here and hence the muscle does not contract so there is no contraction in the muscle in case of lower motor neuron lesions now because the muscle is not contracting muscle is not in use you cannot one cannot use the muscle one there is no innervation no nerve supply to the muscle so it becomes flaccid so if we jot down the points for lower motor neuron lesions in case of muscle mass it goes down drastically because the muscle is not in use and it is it has no innervation next is the muscle power now because there is no maintenance of mass over here and no use of the muscle muscle power becomes zero so there is again drastic decrease decline in muscle power third is tone which is very very important now for the maintenance of tone it is the gamma motor neurons which are responsible primarily that is when they become influenced they carry small amount of acetylcholine at the muscle spindle the muscle spindle remains stretched and that little pull on the muscle spindle here takes it is carried by the 1a fibers and it influences the alpha motor neurons and a contraction cycle continues this is responsible for the normal tone development in any normal human being now if further you want to use your muscles then again action potentials come in the alpha motor neurons to the added action potential which was generated by the gamma motor neurons you have alpha motor neurons to add on to it now whereas in lower motor neuron when this portion of the nerve is not working either in case of gamma or in case of alpha then there is absolutely flaccidity there is no tone so we say the tone goes down or we say hypotonicity next is reflexes the reflexes are just in case of biceps we always keep our thumb at the tendon we give a tap at the tendon and the muscle contracts what are we actually doing when we check a reflex we are pulling the muscle right from the tendon there is a brisk transitory stretch over the extrafusal fiber when we are checking a reflex and that stretch is picked up again by the muscle spindle and given via 1a influences the alpha motor neurons and there is a brisk amount of contraction produced in the biceps muscle that is what is reflex now since there is a lower motor neuron lesion again alpha motor neurons do not carry any action potential signal towards the extrafusal fibers and there is no contraction even though your sensory apparatus is absolutely fine your sensory integration at the cns is fine but because at the peripheral we don't have any proper connection so this does not happen and we say it is a reflexia or hypo reflexia now these four points let's discuss with umn that is had it been an upper motor neuron lesion now let's say the lesion is somewhere here now what happens our sensory apparatus is fine our peripheral motor apparatus is also fine but only the motor apparatus coming from the cortex to the spinal cord is cut so in that case what happens the 
if you stretch the muscle again 1a fibers carry the signals to the spinal cord and from the spinal cord they do come here so that means the muscle mass is reduced because the person is not able to use the muscle but the innervation is still there so that means muscle mass is reduced but not as reduced as in case of the lower motor neuron so we say that there is a slight decrease in the muscle mass similarly in case of muscle power it is down because there is disuse atrophy but since there is innervation maintained by the alpha motor neurons that is the trophic changes are still maintained trophic changes means that even when you are not using your muscles there is a small amount of dribbling of acetylcholine which happens at the extrafusal fibers which is responsible for maintaining the normal tone that keeps happening in case of upper motor neurons so the muscle power although down but not as much down as in case of lower motor neurons so here you need to remember two terms one is denervation atrophy another one is disuse atrophy denervation disuse both the atrophies happen in case of lmn but only disuse atrophy happens in case of upper motor neuron lesions next is the tone now for the tone what happens if you stretch the muscle the muscle spindles the sensory apparatus takes the signals to the spinal cord and the motor apparatus which is working fine also brings it down the gamma motor neurons now are over firing because there is lack of inhibition from the cortical fibers the cortico spinal tract is inhibited it is further creating an over firing of gamma motor neurons over firing of gamma motor neurons creates a action potential generated at the muscle spindle which continues and the alpha motor neurons are even though the person is not using the muscle there is a generation of action potential and the muscle is in the contracted state and so we call it as hypertonic muscles in case of upper motor neuron lesions so there is hypertonicity and next is the reflexes now in case of reflexes what happens the tone in case of upper motor neuron lesion is slightly more than a normal person's tone so now when you give a brief transitory stretch while checking the reflex that amounts to another added contraction in the muscle and we see a quick jerk in the muscle and we say that there is a hyper reflexia so there is hyper reflexia and last point is the babinski response what is before i explain what happens in umn and lmn let me tell you what is babinski babinski response is if this is my foot at the sole of the foot from lateral portion to the medial portion if i stroke i'll pull my foot back that is a normal withdrawal reflex which happens in all the newborns neonates now what happens due to the development of the brain due to the myelination of the cortico spinal tract this reflex at the spinal level it becomes opposite so after that what happens even though you are the child is keeping the foot on the ground it he or she is no longer pulling it back or doing a up going response rather the foot is trying to catch the ground which will help him further to walk so this is a normal sequence now what happens in case of lower motor neurons that is when we stroke on the lateral side of the foot there is no response because alpha motor neurons are no longer supplying the muscle so there is absolutely no response in the muscle the babinski remains down going or no response whereas in case of upper motor neuron lesion when your higher centers control is lost when you do a lateral stroking on the foot 
there is again the primitive reflexes come back that is the neonatal reflex of the babinski which was originally a withdrawal response that comes back that is an extensor response and upgoing babinski happens with extension of the great toe and fanning of the rest of the toes so babinski becomes down going in lmn and babinski becomes up going in case of umn lesions thank you